Hello, thanks for joining me. There's an old quote that goes something like, two companions that I will say goodbye to at the gate of heaven are forgiveness and repentance. And of course, when we enter heaven in eternity, we'll need neither forgiveness or repentance. But in our life here on earth, these are two companions that we need to walk with as we live our lives with God here. We see the principle of forgiveness taught by Jesus in parables and in various places in the Gospels, but never more so than in the Lord's Prayer. You'll recall the line very familiar to us, forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Matthew 18.21, the Apostle Peter comes to Jesus and says, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother who, uh, or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And the implication there is, it's an ongoing process. You have to keep forgiving people. Those who hurt you, those who offend you, those who treat you badly is part of the Christian way of life and I know it's not easy now we're not to put ourselves of course under an abusive person who will either physically or mentally harm us on an ongoing basis but there is an ongoing need to forgive you may say Mick you don't understand what I've what my experience is. You don't know what other people have done to me, you don't know what so-and-so has said about me or the way they've behaved. Now of course it's quite difficult um, in certain circumstances and we've, I've personally been through a lot of circumstances you can't avoid it in the Christian life where somebody is going to offend you, somebody's going to hurt you. Last year I read a very powerful book uh, about forgiveness and it's the true story of a father who came home one evening uh, with his wife and his two sons after they'd been out for one evening and they've, as they pulled up to their house they could see that some people were in their house and uh, as they got closer to the front door the, these young people ran out the front door and began shooting. The father and the oldest son were injured. Uh, uh, the younger son and the, his wife, um, the mother, were killed. And um, it's just this testimony that comes forth. Uh, it's a Christian man and how he handles the situation that is really powerful in the story. He decided while recovering in hospital to forgive those in the breaking including the killer of his wife and his son. When you read the story it strikes you what an amazing act of forgiveness this man chooses to make. As the story unfolds it comes to light that the person behind the breaking and the deliberate shooting of the family members is actually the oldest son. Now the oldest son is then charged with murder and he is sentenced to the death penalty and he's on death row. And the story becomes one of the father supporting the oldest son through this very dark time. Towards the end of the book the father comments on his decision to forgive. And these are the words. I've had hundreds of people tell me that my story makes my troubles pale in comparison. But what lesson can we learn from my experiences? Perhaps it is that we must always have the power of choice to trust or not to trust God and his word. When storms come, we must choose to believe that our loving Heavenly Father will weave even disasters into the tapestry of our lives in ways that will ultimately bless and bring glory to him. God honours this trust, just as he blessed my trust on the night of the shooting. As I wrestled with my doubts that night, 
I made the conscious decision to trust him even though I could not imagine how the murders could possibly work for good. I made that choice because his word, the Bible, tells us he will do just that. And I wanted to believe it, even as I doubted. It took a real act of willpower to make myself trust God even in those moments. But that's what he is waiting for, our choosing to trust even when it doesn't make any sense. And that is the essence of faith, isn't it? Just right there. To trust God even when it doesn't make any sense. Once I made that decision, God moved. I chose to forgive everyone who was involved in the murders, but it was God who gave me the power to do so. This may be the biggest lesson for all of us. People hurt other people really badly. But since God commands us to forgive, he will give us his supernatural power to do it if we submit ourselves to him. Even when we feel the task is too big, we can receive help. If we just can't forgive yet, we can pray, God, help me want to forgive. And before long, we'll find that God has worked on our hearts without our realizing it. And we are actually able to extend that forgiveness. God knows that forgiveness can be the hardest gift for someone to give and accept. But he also knows it is vital for our own healing. And if we acknowledge our need in his mercy, he will do the heavy lifting. Thank you.